And as we do each and every Wednesday, folks, we're going to jump to, over to our man Teddy Kegstat. And, folks, you can check out Teddy's outstanding newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report, right under the newsletter tab. You can check that out. He comes out with new issues every week. It's $97. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee, as we do with all newsletters. Check that out. You get some archives of his webinars as well. And if you want to check out a couple great webinars he's done under the Services tab, Capitalizing on Time with calendar stock option spreads and Japanese candlestick pattern stock and option strategies. Teddy's written a great book on candlestick patterns as well, but both of those over there under the services tab for 97 bucks. You get those, you archive them, you have them as long as you want. You watch them as many times as you'd like. Teddy Cakes that. We live in interesting times and we are always talking, it seems like, on interesting days with some movement. Good morning. Good morning. So we got uh, the chairman on Friday. Everyone's talking about, of course, in Jackson Hole. But, boy, we've seen some moves, man. we got the 10-year yield now sitting at 3.8%. The market seems like it's screaming for some cuts. And uh, and that putting some weakness into the dollar. Where do you want to kick things off, man? Uh, well, we can talk about the dollar. We can talk about crude. Uh, since we're start of the dollar, let's start with that. Um, let's that do Obviously, it. a nice uh, you know follow through to the downside this week. The dollar index uh, started to really get pounded on uh, Monday and Tuesday. Today, it's relatively quiet, set a lower low from uh, yesterday. It fell down into our downside target zone yesterday and settled in it. So that's a nice support area where we're trading at right now. Um, yes, we have Powell speaking on Friday. So I think you're probably going to see a lot of sideways. You may see a little profit-taking bounce in the dollar, actually, I would think, today and, and into uh, his uh, speak on uh, Friday, whatever um, he's going to say. And um, it, I think it's going to be more regurgitation of uh, you know what we've heard recently. Um, I think one of the things that's really going to help to push the uh, rate cut thing is that the Department of Labor, you know, over the past week came out with revisions for 22 and 23. Um, so there's actually more people unemployed than we thought, you know, but they don't count anymore because they're off the number because they're from two and three years ago. But they adjusted those, so um, un un unemployment was worse at that time than. The market was told so i think that's going to be factored into it as well and i think the market has reacted to that and already bid it up so i mean i think you just have to basically watch the inflation numbers as long as they stay on a month in month out basis at a pretty smooth pace like they have and remember it doesn't mean inflation has gone away it's just the accelerator has gone from 90 to 85 you know so i mean that's really the environment we're looking at they want i've been saying they want to juice this for the election I think they're going to do it, you know, in September, and then we'll see as far as how aggressive they they go. I think if they go with a half point right off the bat that says that screams to the to the market that they were behind the curve and they were uh, way way too late to the party once again, um, then that could probably give uh, a nice little cut in the in market yields and the bonds, meaning higher prices for a little bit. But I'd be cautious, remember, because right now we already have at least a half a point factored into the market. And what is the most that they're going to end up cutting overall? If they do a point, you know, I mean, the reality is everything, like I said, been saying for a long time, everything they do is counterproductive to what they're really trying to, to do. By cutting interest rates, they're going to actually accelerate inflation into, into next year. No matter who's president, they're going to have to deal with accelerating inflation just by that, those moves. You know, And once again, I think it's going to have a ripple effect in the real estate market as well. You know, everybody's used to this, oh, interest rates should be at zero. Well, no, they actually, they're not supposed to be at zero. They should be actually higher than they are right now. If anything, we should be pulling back to where we are now, and that's if we had a critical situation in the economy. You know, we don't have any room to go. Remember, we had these conversations a couple of years ago when we were at almost 0% interest rates, pushing yeah. negative interest rates. You know, what do you do when all of a sudden there's a calamity? So, right. um, and that's something I think you have to take into account. I, I would say that right now, um, until they actually pull the trigger, I think you're seeing the toppiness in the bond market in the in the, uh, like in the 30 year and the 10 year. I'd be cautious buying into this until they actually pull the trigger, <laughs> As, unless the economic numbers. Now, I'd be very cautious with those. If those are ticking slightly down on month on month, not necessarily year over year, because that's something that we, we have seen is that we've seen month over, over month. Nice little, a nice little reprieve somewhat in inflation since they've discounted everything. They don't put out half the stuff that needs to be in there. So, I mean, these things you have to take into account. So we have a nice trend going in some of the markets. Remember, though, 
the euro right now is pushing is trading right below the high from December 28th of 2023 so we would be making a multi-year high if we take that out in the next couple of days or even today we could possibly do that but I'd be cautious being long above there because until we cut put, cut rates there's not much more room to the upside remember the euro has been basically in a four dollar range trade for the past since then you know yeah. so now we're at that extreme where once again they were talking about cutting rates last Christmas. Now we're sure. in front of Labor Day is coming up in two in a week and a half. You know? So I mean what does that tell you? The market is it's it's been stuck in that range and until they actually pull the trigger, there's no reason for it to to trend out of that range is what I'm saying. So I'd be I'd be looking to buy dips, you know, um definitely against the dollar and and against, you know, the yield, you know, but I'd be very cautious, you know, buying into these highs or selling into these lows until the trigger gets pulled. Nice. I was jumping around those charts as you were talking about it. It is pretty interesting. I mean, the euro, that's quite a well-defined channel range. We've talked about it. And it is interesting. I mean, the dollar index, for all the volatility, we're literally right back to where we were when we kicked off the year, which is crazy. Right. We're 101 and change, and we almost made it up to 106.50 or something like that in the middle of the year, and we're right back to where we were at the right. beginning. And, you, you and we've done it in two what? months, Tommy. We've done it yeah, in two months. Right Yes, quite a drop off from 106 to almost 101. I agree. We know how quickly this market can change its mind in terms of cuts or no cuts or what's coming down the line. You make some great points with what's priced into this market. I want to ask you what you think. So we get the 10 year right now at 3.8%. We were as high as almost five. So the 10 years dropped one and a quarter percent. The Fed hasn't even moved yet. Where, you know, I find myself trying to figure out how far can the 10 year go right now when there's already so much priced in. Do you think about that? I'm sure you do. You mentioned it, but Oh, absolutely. How how far can, you know, and you make it, it can't, you know, we shouldn't go back to zero cuz <laughs> for the points you laid out, you know, it's not how it works and yeah, you need some ammunition if things really go bad to for the Fed to have some some room to stimulate the economy. But, you know, for myself right now I'm saying, but there's already so many cuts that are priced into that 10 year right now, man, there's some real risk. When I look at 3.8 and I say to myself, okay, what's the possibility that we go to 3.5 or what's the possibility we go to back to 4.1? Say maybe we get a little bit of a reverberation. That's my own market bias. But what do you think about that conversation when you look at it that way? You no, know, that's exact, and that's like what I was saying right now. Until they pull the trigger, we've hit that yeah. extreme. And but that other half a point, let's say they do a full point over the next four meetings, five meetings going into next year yep. or whatever. Um, a half a point's already factored in. So there's not that much yeah. room for yeah. bond prices and 10-year prices to go up. I'm, I am I think there's still a little bit of a trade there for sure. Once they pull the trigger, you'll break out of that range and then we're gonna shoot for that total of one point from when they were you know, on pause. And so I, yeah. I think you have that much of a move to go yet, And then, but I'd be cautious up there for sure. Can we talk crude? Can you hang with us and finish sure. up with some crude after the break? All right, stay Sounds tuned, folks. Good. We'll talk a little bit of crude. Crude right now, trading at 73.55. We got markets in positive territory. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back to finish it up with Teddy. Welcome back, folks. We've got the S&Ps holding on to the gains up by about 13 points right now. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Don't forget to check out his outstanding Tiger Forex report, folks. You can check out the news, the um, webinars he's got under the services tab, and we're going to finish it off with a little bit of crude. So, Teddy, we're testing the lows we had early this month. We're back to the lows we had in June. We're pushing about $72. We're trading at $73.63. Quite a drop off from $80 not that long ago. What do you think about this crude market, man? Well, I think we can continue our conversation where we left off last week. Last week when we spoke, we were talking about how that previous Monday and Tuesday we had double top right up against our uh, critical resistance band from the Tiger Forex report. And remember, I was talking about how Wednesday and Thursday's trade going to Friday, if they could get back above those highs and close above 80, that would be a bullish breakout sign and probably indicate higher prices. If not, those highs were the directional bias. We never got above those. We actually continued lower, and now we fell into yesterday we settled into our critical support band near those lows that you're speaking about. That's key yeah. support there. Um, I think that it's going to be very tough to get below there unless we have any real driving fundamental that would do that. You know, I can't foresee what that would be right now. Um, especially you got all the kids going back to school and stuff like that. I'm assuming demand for gas and stuff like that is going to at least be somewhat stronger over the next month or so as we come out of uh, summer into uh, fall. 
Um, and I, I like the support area where we're at. I think maybe we could be in a nice range between 72 and 80 going into the election. Once again, though, if we get above 80, that would be a huge breakout sign. I'd be very cautious being sh- uh, short above there, especially if we get in a couple days of closing. Um, but we're almost $10 away now, which is nice. Um, but I, I, like I said, as far as um, going to the downside, I'd be very cautious now. You know, now I think you're at the point where you might get caught selling in the hole, you know, especially if you get below these lows. I appreciate the take, man. It is pretty remarkable looking at this thing, just how we've been shopping around between about 70 bucks and maybe 90 and well off the volatility we had in years past um, of the 100 et cetera. So we're just uh, in a little bit of a range maybe. We'll see. Teddy, Let's I appreciate see this, the Mike, time. We want to end on the yen real quick. One last little look. Yeah, do it. Let's do it for sure. It, it's, get, it's getting a little bounce right now, but otherwise, if, if crude doesn't uh, get a bounce, I think the yen has a chance to get a little bit lower yet, especially with the yields going down. I like it, man. Thanks for fitting it all in. Great information as always, Teddy. I appreciate it. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next Wednesday, man. Thanks so much. Folks, stay tuned for Basil. Appreciate